Okay, everyone's uh, getting settled in up here. Fred Sternberg had the wrong order of names, but uh, it's okay. We'll let that. At least you have the belts here in the right order, Fred. I tried. Boy, I'll tell you, this uh, this has been a challenging promotion. Going from uh, Canelo Alvarez at the T-Mobile Arena up in uh, Las Vegas on HBO pay-per-view here to uh, Southern California versus Vanus Margrosian, regular HBO, um, Cecilia Brekus on the co-feature. The, the whole card basically changed upside down, but uh, Triple G was the one that insisted he wanted to fight May 5. He didn't, wanna, he didn't want to wait until uh, Canelo had his suspension over, and, and here we are. We appreciate everyone showing up. It's a great turnout. Uh, this promotion has really turned into something very unique. Um, I want to definitely acknowledge uh, Don King sitting right here. We're, we're honored to uh, have his uh, presence with us uh, today. I've known Don for many, many years. In fact, uh, Don, if you remember that great show you promoted in Mexico City with uh, Julio Cesar Chavez and Obacar fought Felix Trinidad on that show and you had so many great fighters. I was down there with Obacar and John David Jackson and that was a tremendous event and uh, I've had many good memories with Don over the years, and we're happy uh, that Don is here, and he uh, really can add a whole different dimension to a promotion. I have to give Don credit. When uh, Canelo Alvarez was no longer available, he called me, Mauricio Suleiman called me, and we were able to finalize a deal literally in two or three days. Uh, he said Vanas Marrosian is ready to go. He had been training for a different fight. He had been training to fight Suleski. And um, it really shows the heart of a champion uh, for somebody who's been so avoided like Triple G has in the past. For Vanas, who's a number one rated contender, it's not like he had nothing to lose. He has the number one rating in the WBC uh, at junior featherweight, and he's moving up to fight uh, Triple G. So I definitely want to thank Vonis, Edmund, and Don King for for their help in making making this fight because it really wasn't a long time to negotiate. Um, before we get into all the principles, um, just want to thank a few people. Uh, naturally, everyone on on uh, on uh, the Triple G side, Triple G Promotions. Uh, without their help, something like this, uh, a big show like this. Uh, on HBO, we're projecting this to have the highest rated uh, show so far and probably of the year on uh, any premium cable. Uh, when you have Triple G, when you have uh, Cecilia Brekus, when you have Vanis Martirosian and uh, Kaylee Reese, uh, it's, it's really a tremendous, tremendous show how this whole thing progressed. Um, with that, I want to thank, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, our sponsors. Uh, without them, uh, you know, there, there is definitely a, uh, uh, a huge uh, involvement uh, for the sponsors. Uh, uh, Cinco de Mayo uh, is the biggest date in uh, Fort Tecate. Uh, they have a huge commitment for boxing, and um, they were one of the strong supporters to keep this show on Cinco de Mayo. Um, Triple G recently signed a uh, personal services contract with, uh, with Takati as a brand ambassador. So we thank, uh, we thank them for their strong support for this show. Uh, also, Takati is going to host a fan fest. The doors open at 4 o'clock, and Takati's fan fest is going to start from 4 to 7, uh, where a lot of fans can come out um, and uh, uh, just enjoy the StubHub Center, enjoy the Southern California weather. And, um, uh, you know, Takati is the official beer uh, of the sport of boxing. And, uh, you know, we just want everyone to enjoy Takati responsibly, but it will be a fun, it will be a fun weekend. Also, Chivas is a, is a big sponsor of this, uh, of this event. Uh, Gennady also has a, uh, he teamed up with Chivas last year um, for, you know, starting the Chivas Fight Club. Um, and, you know, their initiative is really to inspire the fighting spirit within individuals. Um, the Shivas Fight Club stands for principles. Their slogan is winning the right way. And I don't think anybody embodies that slogan, winning the right way, as Triple G. Um, he's a unified champion. You see all these belts here in front of you. Uh, in fact, I have to uh, point out, 
that uh, Cecilia is the only boxer in the sport of boxing to have more belts than Triple G has. So this is almost like a museum here of boxing. <laughs> Everyone, I don't think uh, two fighters have had this many belts amongst themselves. The, the best male fighter and the best female fighter in the sport of boxing on the same show uh, on HBO. I'm sure Vanas has something to say about that, and Kaylee Reese has something to say about that. And, um, you know, Triple G has a famous quote that uh, I just heard him use earlier uh, this week in, a, in, a, in an interview, that uh, one punch can change the fight, one punch can change your career, and one punch can change your life. So boxing is not a sport uh, for the mild-mannered. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to get in the ring and to have to be able to, to collect uh, this many titles uh, really is a huge statement for both Triple G and uh, Cecilia. Um, we want to um, acknowledge, let's see, where am I going to start here? I don't really have uh, any uh, great order, but uh, what we will do is uh, we'll start bringing up a representative from the WBC. I want to bring it, they made this beautiful commemorative belt for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, I want to bring up, on behalf of the WBC, I want to bring up uh, Pepe Suleiman. Good morning. Wow, what a, what a great occasion, what a, what a great card. How can anybody say anything about when you have Two of the greatest fighters, the best female fighter, sorry champ, ladies first, <laughs> Cecilia and, and uh, Gennady, going against two very, very, very tough advers adversaries and uh, uh, form our former silver champion, former WBC champion with Kaylee, and uh, this is a great occasion. Uh, Mauricio, uh, Mauricio Sulaiman, our president, has made a commemorative belt. Right here you can see, the, the, you remember the, the, the Huichol belt? Now is the Chiapas belt uh, from, from the southern region of Mexico for the very special fight on May 5th, and there will be another one for September 16th. These are, these are belts for the world. It doesn't matter if it's a, a, a Mexican fighter involved in the fight, doesn't matter. It's, this is uh, a, a gift from the WBC to the world. I just uh, also, um, this is May of, uh, we have this uh, uh, green ribbon for mental awareness. And this will not be the first, not, nor the last time HBO makes a history. Because for the first time in American HBO, uh, we have a co-main event of uh, female fighters. Cecilia and Kaylee will be the, the, the fighters for this occasion. And I, can, I, I really appreciate the greatest promoter in history being here with us, Don King. Tom, very young, but coming on very, very strong, and certainly one of the most creative promoters, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially the young. <laughs> so we are very, very proud. The WBC is very proud to be part of this event, this great, great card. Uh, the Stop Hub Center is a great venue, uh, intimate, where, where you can see, really feel the action in the ring. So we expect many, many, many good, good fights, many great action in the ring. So on behalf of the WBC, I want to I wanna congratulate the fighters, wish them the best of luck. Uh, be careful with the punch, be careful with the one punch, <laughs> and uh, may the best fighter win. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pepe. Um, without the support of HBO, through this. Uh, well, throughout Gennady's career, but uh, throughout this uh, turbulent uh, time, the events uh, over the last month, um, a show like this wouldn't have been possible. Um, 
without them, uh, without Peter Nelson agreeing uh, to put this on the HBO platform, they literally had nothing programmed for Cinco de Mayo outside of HBO pay-per-view uh, of the fight that was uh, that was scheduled. So Peter created space on the network. Uh, we have a later start time than normal. It's uh, 8 p.m. here on the West Coast, 11 p.m. on the East Coast. Um, and ironically enough, Peter helped us create history at HBO. I think it's 45 years on the network that never had a female fight. Forget about undisputed champion, forget about female championship, a female fight on HBO. So this is a historic event for HBO, for the sport of boxing, and especially for women's boxing. Um, we, uh, as much as this card has changed, the location and everything else, uh, being able to feature Cecilia Brekus versus Kaylee Reese is a historic, momentous occasion. You know, Peter uh, created history or opened up a lot of doors when I met with him, with uh, this gentleman sitting next to me who really couldn't speak uh, much English, who uh, nobody really knew in the United States. And uh, Abel was there, and the managers were there, and I told Peter, here's an undefeated champion from Kazakhstan. He'll fight anybody. He doesn't need a lot of money. He just wants the exposure. And ironically enough, that meeting was in January. Ironically enough, in September, the door opened when a fight fell out. Um, I remember it uh, like yesterday. It was uh, Pirog versus Daniel Giel. Daniel Giel was a champion. He decided to fight Triple G's mandatory in Germany, and that opened up a spot to fight Pirog, who nobody wanted to fight. Pirog had just knocked out Daniel Jacobs. Nobody wanted to fight Pirog, especially for not a lot of money, especially in a unification fight. And I told Peter without any hesitation, Triple G welcomes the opportunity. Unfortunately, Pirog since then had gotten injured. He had to pull out, and that wound up being uh, Proxa, uh, the European champion. But uh, Triple G recognized the opportunity. He recognized the fact being on HBO, the biggest platform in the sport of boxing, the platform that really creates careers like Triple G's career has taken off since that date, September 2012, but at the same time, you know, Triple G realized if he didn't have a great performance, if he had an off night, Peter and HBO wouldn't come calling again. They wouldn't put him back on. But because he had such a spectacular performance, HBO kept putting him on and on and on to now where he was, you know, in the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. So we have to acknowledge uh, Peter for that. We also made uh, news or uh, history with uh, when we opened the door for Chocotito to be on the network as a flyweight. Uh, the flyweight division had been overlooked so long here in the US. And uh, to have Chocotito open the doors, break open the doors, become you know, a household name, become the number one pound for pound fighter in the sport of boxing. He was a great, tremendous champion prior to that, but just having the exposure, everybody realized, you know, this guy really is the best pound for pound champion in the sport. Um, you know, having Triple G, Chocotito, you know, really open up the doors you know, everyone tells me now, I'm sure Peter, I have the next Triple G from Kazakhstan. Before, nobody <laughs> was interested in a fighter from Kazakhstan. <laughs> and now, everyone says, I have the next Triple G from Kazakhstan. Uh, but this really feels like a bigger event. There have been great champions. There have been different weight classes on HBO. But having female, the first female boxing event showcased on HBO just feels like it's more historic uh, of an event. Um, so, without the help of HBO, we wouldn't be here today for this show. Without the help of HBO, Triple G wouldn't be here, Vanus wouldn't be here, Cecilia wouldn't be here, and uh, Kaylee Reese wouldn't be here. So, with that, to say some words on behalf of HBO, I want to bring up uh, Tony Walker. Thanks a lot, Tom. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. And uh, on behalf of our executive vice president, Peter Nelson, and the rest of the HBO staff, we are very excited to be back at Stuff Up on Saturday night. It's always a great place to do a show, and they make it very easy for us. 
Special thanks has to go out to Triple G, to Tom, to Vanas, to Don King for not giving up on May 5th, which has become synonymous with big time boxing. We look forward and we think it's gonna be a very special night. The circumstances are not what we thought they would be months ago, but it's an opportunity for the depth of talent in boxing to come through again. And what an opportunity for Vanas and for Kaylee to really put their marks on boxing. Triple G has always had, has developed a special relationship with the fans here in Southern California. I, it's hard to imagine a guy from Kazakhstan being able to generate the crowds that he does, but he is doing it consistently. And uh, we think uh, that's going to shine through on the HBO telecast on Saturday night. We are, as, as Tom talked about the first woman's fight on HBO, we are pl very pleased to present the incomparable Cecilia Breakhouse, who has a nine year championship Rain. That's hard to do in any sport. And uh, we think the fight with Kay Kaylee is going to be skilled, competitive, and will showcase what wing women boxing uh, can be and uh, something a little bit different for the HBO customers. So, yes, t Saturday night, 8 o'clock local time, 11 o'clock Eastern time, we will do our best to show our subscribers what the excitement at Stub Hub is like. So, thank you and um, looking forward to Saturday. With that, before we uh, get into uh, some of the principles up here, I wanted to bring up, we have a tremendous undercard. Again, the doors open at four o'clock. We have a great undercard. Ryan Martin is uh, featured on the uh, international telecast. He's fighting uh, Bredis Prescott. Bredis Prescott, many of you will remember, knocked out Amir Khan. Amir just had a big uh, comeback win over in the UK, made, made a lot of news. And uh, Ryan is fighting the guy who knocked out Amir Khan. So we're happy to have that match. Uh, on the show, uh, Ruslan Madayev, who trains with Abel Sanchez, he's undefeated, 11-0 from Kazakhstan. He's a training partner with Triple G. Um, he's fighting Jesus Perez, 21-0 from Mexico. So he's taking a huge step up uh, in competition, but uh, Ruslan knows if he's going to be on a show like Triple G's, like this big show on HBO at the StubHub Center, he's got to fight a tough guy. Um, um, with that, I want to bring up uh, one of the fighters who's with us today. He just made his pro debut uh, in February here in Los Angeles. He's hailing from New York, a tremendous amateur, uh, born, in, uh, born in Puerto Rico to Dominican parents, raised in Brooklyn, New York, and made his pro debut, and now his second fight uh, is on this show here in Los Angeles. So I want to bring up uh, Brian Ceballo. There's Brian. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on the undercard of, uh, of such a great um, card on the Triple G um, and Veins and uh, two best female boxers in the world. Um, you know, I want, I want to thank my team for this opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm in shape, you know, uh, and I'm ready to showcase my talent on Saturday night. Thank you, guys. Don't miss, uh, don't miss Brian's fight. His fight is supposed to start at 5.30. Uh, the first fight of the night is actually uh, brought to us by Tykin Promotions. We have a very good relationship with Mr. Honda. The junior flyweight uh, champion uh, fight. It's uh, Jesse Rodriguez undefeated, trains with Robert Garcia, 5-0 and versus Armando Vasquez from Mexico, Mexicali, Mas uh, Mexicali Mexico. So uh, that's gonna be the first fight of the night, then Brian's. Then uh, Ruslan, as I mentioned, uh, two undefeated fighters fighting themselves, and Ryan Martin versus Bredis Prescott. Abel uh, wanted me to uh, just point out that he also trains Ryan Martin. So Abel has uh, three fighters uh, on the show, and he'll be busy on, uh, on Saturday night. Um, with that being said, I want to bring up uh, someone who I also have known for a long time. Uh, when this opportunity uh, presented itself, uh, originally, you know, the whole dynamic of this card changed. So when we were talking about uh, Cecilia Breakhouse being, uh, being on the pay-per-view, uh, actually before the pay-per-view, because of Norwegian television timing, uh, she was gonna be early on the uh, Canelo uh, and Triple G uh, fight. Uh, now everything changed. Now it's an eight o'clock start time. 
And uh, throughout all the changes, um, I have to give uh, Joe DeGuardia a lot of credit. Uh, he didn't uh, hesitate at all when this opportunity came up. Uh, it's also not easy fighting, finding opponents for Cecilia, especially opponents that she hasn't fought. So now we had to go to the, she's a welterweight champion, undisputed welterweight champion. We went to the middleweight division. Callie Reese is a uh, former world champion at the middleweight division. She's agreed to come down two divisions to challenge for all of Cecilia's welterweight titles. She's gonna be physically much stronger or much bigger in the ring on Saturday night. So this isn't one of those showcase fights for Cecilia to be on uh, HBO. This is a very, very difficult fight. I know Kaylee wants to come and, and win these titles. Uh, she, it's a huge opportunity for her to be showcased on HBO. So with that, I wanna bring up my friend and the promoter of uh, Kaylee Reese, Joe DeGuardia. Thank you, Tom. Firstly, um, I just, I don't know if Tom, or it's been really been able to be put out there is how much work Tom has done to be able to put this together. And it's really, really a credit to him and uh, HBO and Peter Nelson for taking this show, which really was in Las Vegas. I mean, when you really think about it, and it was Canelo, Triple G, and keep this together and put on a massive card now on HBO that's going to do tremendous ratings. It's a real testament to Tom and all the work he's done, uh, and also Triple G for being able to force this to go forward, and HBO for recognizing what kind of special card this is going to be. So I want to congratulate you, Tom. No. I'm thrilled that we're going to be a part of history on Saturday night, the first time that HBO will be featuring a championship, any women's fight. And what a fitting fight. Cecilia Brekes is has an amazing run. Nine years a world champion, all the world title belts in her division, and I would say the best female fighter arguably in the world. But I'm pleased that Kaylee Reese is going to be fighting Saturday night. She has an unbelievable fighting spirit. We signed her because of that fighting spirit and it comes, I guess, from years of tradition. She's got a Native American background, Cherokee and other uh, bloodlines, which she'll tell you about. Um, but she's something special. Former world champion herself at middleweight, as Tom has said. She's coming down in weight. She jumped right at the opportunity, said she'll make 47, no problem. That's a big difference, 13 pounds from her normal fighting weight. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, Kaylee is deserving of this fight. As I just said, she's got that fighting spirit, but she's also something special outside the ring. And, you know, when she was young, 12, 13 years old, she had some tough times. And she was tired of getting taken advantage of. And she went to a boxing gym at 14 years old. And this is the result. She's become a world champion at middleweight. Now is fighting in a historic fight on HBO. And inside the ring, she's been special. She's also been special outside the ring. Criminal justice, background in school, she went for schooling for it. Um, believe it or not, a motorcycle repairman, uh, certified, does motorcycle work. She works in a um, um, disadvantaged youth home, counseling disadvantaged youth. Real tremendous background outside the ring as well. So I'm very pleased and proud and congratulate her and I'm happy to announce her for this fight coming up May 5th, Kaylee Reese. Uh, thank you so much, Joe. Uh, I just, again, have to give thanks to Tom, too, for putting this, this show together. I am so honored and thankful to be a part of this historic fight. I mean, even if it wasn't me up here, just the fact that HBO, thank you, HBO, for giving us women a platform 
to show our skills. You know, this is such a tremendous event, being here on the West Coast, being able to fight the StubHub, being able to be on the undercard of Triple G, one of the fighters that I admire so much. Um, this is just such an honor, and I'm so, so thankful for it. I also want to give a thanks to uh, Cecilia's team, too, also for choosing me. Um, they didn't choose me, like she said, just to have an easy fight, to showcase our skills in the U.S., to kind of have a, a breeze through. We both know what we're in for on Saturday. You know, um, the, the whole historic event about this fight, it's, it's nice, and I, you know, I know exactly what, the, what this fight means, but you know, I've been focused. Um, I have looked up to Cecilia and her career since I started turning pro, and even the corner that she has in Lucia. I mean, this whole event in itself is just really historic, and I, I'm just very pleased and honored to be a part of this. I have one of the best teams out there, um, from my trainer, Danny Davis, to my, my manager, Brian Cohen, and also getting signed with Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. This is all just falling into place, I'm very, very thankful. And I'm ready to, to, to put my mark in history on Saturday and give you guys a, a great show. So thank you guys. I have to say, uh, you know, everybody that's participated in this promotion has really done their part in promoting this fight. Kaylee was at the media training yesterday. Lucia was at the media training. Uh, Cecilia also was at the media training. Um, it just, uh, you know, it's nice to see everything come together. Uh, Triple G went to uh, Edmonds Gym in Glendale. It's very unheard of for a unified champion, let alone a regular champion, to go to a challenger's gym. And uh, Edmund, Don King, uh, Vonis have done a tremendous job promoting this fight on their side. So we just want to thank all the participants. Uh, as Kaylee had alluded to, uh, someone who I've also known for a long time, who actually worked with for a few fights, and she fought at the Staples Center um, on the uh, same show with Lennox Lewis. And, you know, we had a mutual, uh, very close friend of Emmanuel Stewart, uh, who's no longer with us today, unfortunately, but uh, uh, someone who I'm honored to bring up. Uh, she had never gotten the opportunity to fight on HBO, but she'll be on HBO now as the chief trainer for Cecilia Brekus. Um, really considered the best fighter, I believe, in uh, women's boxing history, the most dominant uh, fighter in women's boxing. I want to bring up uh, Lucia Riker. Well, thank you all for coming, and thank you, Tom, for um, giving me the microphone. This is not my night, and yet, it's a little bit my night, because I'm honored to be part of histor history for HBO, but also to be in Cecilia's corner, who is pound for pound the best. She fought the best. She challenges everybody out there, no matter who you are, no matter what weight class. She stepped up, she's proven herself, and this Saturday she'll prove again that she is an amazing, fierce champion. She can smile like a pretty girl, she's gorgeous. She can fight like an animal. So she has that fierce Colombian blood. Don't let, mis let the Norwegian accent mislead you in heart and spirit. She has Colombian blood, so she's gonna come to fight. I'm honored to be here again. Uh, thank you all for coming. It's not my night. I'm stepping down. These women are gonna steal the show. They might have the main event, but they're gonna steal the show. Thank you. So, really doesn't need any more introduction. Again, uh, the only person, male or female, with more belts than Triple G, uh, undisputed champion, the welterweight division, the female, boxing, making history on HBO. I want to bring up uh, Cecilia Brekus. Thank you, Tom. And Lucia, you always make me laugh. <laughs> we have such a great time in the gym together. And, um, well, um, I think um, most have been said. I am so excited and so thankful for everything that has been done leading up till 
this fight, uh, my team, Tom, HBO, um, sharing the stage with the best uh, male pound for pound fighter. Um, uh, it takes two to rumble. You know, we got uh, Kelly Rice, who is a uh, former world champion, and uh, and my biggest wish for this night is that this will be something that will open the doors uh, for more female fights in the future on HBO. Um, I, um, I hope for all the Norwegian fans, this is very emotional for me, I hope for all the Norwegian fans, you know, this is the middle of the night in Norway, I hope you will uh, stay up and watch this, and uh, I hope you will be uh, very proud of me uh, making history on uh, uh, Saturday, night to Sunday in Norway, and I, I cannot wait, and me and Kelly Rice, we promise to put on a great show, so thank you so much, everybody. That's really gonna be a historic moment, and uh, as Lucia said, the co-feature might steal the, the show from the main event. I know both, uh, both Kaylee and Cecilia are ready to put on a show for the fans. Um, they have the task of being the first, and the honor of being the first female fight on HBO, but they're really gonna show uh, what women's boxing, what women's championship boxing is all about. So we just, uh, uh, I, I really think it deserves another round of applause, what uh, Cecilia and what Kaylee are accomplishing. Again, thanks to Peter Nelson for having the, the uh, foresight and uh, wherewithal to, uh, to put this as the, uh, the co-feature, uh, as the opening bout. With that being said, uh, a man who really needs no introduction, um, who's promoted many of the biggest fights in boxing history, from Muhammad Ali to Julio Cesar Chavez to Mike Tyson to Felix Trinidad to the list I can go on and on. Um, again, someone who was very cooperative, very easy to make the deal with, very supportive of the promotion. He flew in early so he could be here at the press conference to support this promotion, to support his fighter. Uh, Vanis Martirosian, it's, uh, he's very hungry. He has a huge opportunity in front of him. Uh, with one punch or one fight, he could take all the belts here on this side of the table away from Triple G, something that uh, Gennady's worked so hard to do. It's a huge opportunity for Vanis, huge opportunity for, for Edmund, and a huge opportunity for Don. So with that, I want to bring up Don King. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> First, let me say, charity starts at home and spreads abroad. And I want to thank the Gateway, the Sheraton Gateway, uh, Christina Preciado, Michelle Lacosta, and Abby Fernandez for their gracious help in uh, making this event an event here at this great hotel. But working together works, and they have really done a tremendous job in welcoming us and uh, giving us the hospitality, uh, you know, that they graciously extends to everyone, but it kind of was kind of special for us. So thank you, uh, Sheraton Gateway, and uh, Christina and Michelle and Abby. So don't forget that those are great people for Sheraton. They did they do Sheraton proud. Secondly, <clears throat> this is the event is a spiritual event, as you have heard. Without me going into a long dissertation. Every indication here shows that this is an event of destiny. So when you're dealing with the spirits and you're dealing with God, you have to be able to understand this is going to be a tremendously exciting event, but it's going to be an historical event um, for HBO. And, uh, and I'm very happy and proud that Peter Nelson has the opportunity uh, to be the host here in disseminating this event around the world. And fighting for women's rights. Well, I'm a staunch fighter for women's rights. And the young lady in the audience here today was the president of the Women's Network and an ardent fighter uh, for women's rights. And I'd like you to 
introduce her to you. Her day is her birthday. Uh, happy birthday, Michelle Patterson, President of Women's Rights. Bring that stand up and let them know who you are. <laughs> <clears throat> These are the things that are indic indicative of what Cecilia and all of the different women that are here that are, are tremendous. And they all say, what do you think about women's boxing? I say, I think about women's rights. You know what I mean? Because it's their choice to be whether they want to be a boxer or they want to be a, a movie star, a lover, whatever they are. You know what I mean? That's their choice. And uh, they, like people of color, have been enslaved, what they call concentric slavery without rights. And so this is something that we all are fighting for, but it's uh, great to see women that will stand up and fight for their rights in, uh, in the manner that they do. And I think that that's what they should do because without them, none of us would be here. And so this is what you must understand, you know, where it, really far, where it begins at. And so um, here we are now talking about a young man and the destiny of these different things that are transpiring. And it's, it's remarkable how Tom Loeffler and and Peter Nelson and all of them put this event together. That's why I say it is destiny in, uh, in uh, making whole. You cannot knock a fighter like uh, Golovkin. Uh, the, he's, Triple G is uh, a, a sensational uh, fighter. He's, one of the, he's the best in his league. You know, if you have a nice array of belts here, you cannot, by any stretch of the imagination, uh, come in and, and uh, denigrate him. But I learned from the master, the pro himself. You see, they float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Your hands can't hit what your eyes can't see. So you got to be able to deal with that was Muhammad Ali. And he told me that no matter how great you are as a fighter, to be a whole human being and to be able to establish that type of stature, you have to lose. He says, so losing is winning when you are a fighter for the people, and you have faith in God. So I don't know. You're going to be the judge because everything that's indicative of this fight taking place is because Triple G had the steadfast desire to fight on Cinco de Mayo. Well, you know me being born in Texcoco, in Mexico, uh, <laughs> I have to say that Cinco de Mayo is a, a destiny day, you know, that... Um, that we all celebrate. You know, they, they, uh, they named the stadium after me in Texcoco. But, you know, coming from the days of Hidalgo, when he said Mexicanos, that's the Independence Day that's coming up in September. Um, Mexicanos, Viva Mexico. Viva, Viva Mexico. Viva. You know. And then you have the guys that were fighting for the people. Uh, Emiliano Zapata, Pancho Villa, you know what I mean, was fighting for the people, the small people that was there, the masses. Well, you have to put all these indicative spiritual things together and to make it what it should be, sacrificial people like the young man that come from uh, Paris. In, uh, in Paris, he gave his life uh, for the victims that they were holding, the, the, uh, the terrorists were holding. And he said, take me and uh, let them go. And they did that. So the terrorists let the people go. They kept their part of the bargain and they killed the police officer who gave his life. That's truly giving your life for your friend, John 15, 13. You know, no greater love than one would lay down his life for one's friends. So you got to understand this whole event here of me being here, standing here, and I'm very honored to be working with Tom Loeffler, and I'm great to be back home again at HBO just momentarily. Hopefully Peter will see the light. You know what I mean? <laughs> And uh, we'll be able to deal with it. But it's something else that people don't understand. And before I give this, uh, pull this all together, you see these two little flags right here? These little flags here is the destiny of the world uh, coming up when they have the most disparaged president in the history of, uh, of American history uh, uh, will be the tongue. And, uh, and, and if you look at 1821 in the Proverbs, Say the tongue is the death of life, death or life, you know what I mean? So you got it coming right up here with Donald Trump. We'll be talking to Kim Jong-un, but I established with the Korean people, no East Korea, no West Korea, no North Korea, no South Korea, one Korea, yeah. one Korea. Yeah. All right, so we, so we want to be able to have all of these things, all of these destiny things here, and they're coming in 
a Korean delegation we'll all be talking, brings us to Armenia. Why I'm here, Armenia. America, Armenia, you know? I want you to understand something. You're gonna be the judge. All of the spiritual things that everyone has come up has been talking about two things that have been difficult for people to comprehend. One is the woman, first and foremost, because without any of us or wherever us would be, we could not be here without that woman, yet we treat her with disdain, disrespect, and say she's frivolous, she can't make a decision, yet she made a decision to bring you here and to take care of you and to mean the way you can come up to be what you are and what you can be if you have the faith in God to be what you want to be. All right? Then you have an opportunity to deal with what is real in life, which makes this country great in its words, one land, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. These are the self-evident truths, but we live and practice this self-evident lie, you know, and why they say that I would support this guy that I'm wearing on my coat here, Donald Trump, it ain't, you see, it is not about Donald Trump, it's about what he brings out, he's bringing out the truth, no matter whether you like him or dislike him, it has nothing to do with it, you're having discussions that you would never had, you're finding out things that you would have never known, you're having resonations, confessions, you know what I mean? You're having indictments, everything that but yet they ain't got him yet, but we're on a trail, we're close to it. We we working at it. We working at it, you know what I mean? I've never seen the like this here with the most brilliant minds in the world, Interpol, CIA, intelligence, you know what I mean? Everybody's there working in the FBI, but nobody can find nothing. But they're working on it. We're getting close to it, we're getting close, you know what I mean? With the brilliant minds in the world. You know what I mean? So it's true how ridiculous it is that uh, Satan is at work. And so when you have an historical God-given event, you will be the judge because what this young man, Red Bannis, comes in, I want you to hear this now. Bannis was made the mandatory challenger by the WBC. The WBC is like home to me with uh, my dear brother who's passed now, Jose Suleiman Shagnon, uh, but his spirit lives live. Safety first and uh, uh, for the boxer, and fair play for the boxer. All right, fair play. Vanish stood up for everything that the WBC represented. And then Ishi Smith pulls out after six months of negotiation and the fight gets set, get a date, everything is ready. Vanish, Ishi Smith pulls out. Now, the rule of the WBC says that a man that's in a mandatory position cannot fight because he will lose his mandatory position. So that means that six, seven, eight months, you know, Vannis had to, he, he, he stayed. I asked the WBC to give him the winner by default. They say, well, no, we can't do that. So they opted to appoint another mandatory challenger. Meantime, Vannis is borrowing money, getting himself deeply indebted, and also at the same time, you know, working without training, without fighting. The WBC, in the inimitable wisdom, inimitable wisdom, I should say, appointed Selecki. He appointed Selecki to be the mandatory challenger. So we then flew to Mexico. We put up a bid. I put up $22,000 in the process of getting Venice this opportunity again to fight for uh, the WBC belt, that green belt, the most heralded belt in the sport of boxing. And uh, after we pulled it all together, um, Satan jumped into the pack again, whispered into Selecki's, my manager, Greg Leon, he broke his word, and uh, no, my goal is not Greg Leon, stop, Greg uh, Leon, my goal is, you know, Leon, my goal is, you know, that's with warrior boxing. He shattered his word, he defected, and, uh, that, but that left Vannis another six months of working and getting prepared for a fight that was non-existent, all right? So now, thank God for uh, my son, my hijo, uh, Mauricio Suleiman, and, uh, and so he fights to get Vannis the opportunity to fight one of the greatest boxers in the world, Triple G. Now, all of these things that happen, uh, destiny, all these events that you hear Tom Loeffler and you hear Peter Nelson, 
and uh, all of them sticking together, they don't even know why themselves. This was a fight that was set to happen with Canelo, Cinco de Mayo. Canelo coming from had a draw with him. Canelo coming back to be able to fight, you know what I mean, to demonstrate, you know, that Mexicans come to fight. They don't give in, they don't give up, and they don't quit. And uh, Canelo eats some contaminated meat, so he says. And that means he has to withdraw. He withdraws from the fight. All of these things are just indicative of the history that you guys are going to be able to witness on Cinco de Mayo. Now, here Vanis is, sitting here now, a man from Armenia, and Armenians stick together. Armenians come to fight. My best friend was an Armenian, and Kirk Kerkorian, and his spirit is standing here with me now. So when you say Armenia, you know, you ain't, you ain't just seeing something that's happenstance. It's tied here with America. You're going to see destiny take its place on Saturday night with this great fighter. Uh, what, how you say it? Gennady? Golov Golovkin? Yes, from Kazakhstan? Well, the spirits of Kazakhstan is showering down on us now. And the, the inimitable words of Muhammad Ali says you, don't, you have to lose to be a whole champion. So there's no disgrace in losing. If you come back, you get knocked down, you get back up, you dust yourself off and get back into the game. That's what counts. That's got to be dem demonstrative to anybody. Don't just give in and give up and quit and feel sorry for yourself. You go out there and you change the game. Then you are a whole champion. When you come back, you are undefeatable because you have demonstrated that the psychological effect of what the pertinent things of what people think. Yes, we just talk about peer, your peers. It don't mean nothing if you ain't got that heart and that mind and intestinal fortitude to say, I can, I will, I must, and it's going to be done. And so this may be the opportunity that Vannis has been waiting on because yesterday's nobody becomes tomorrow's somebody. And I want you all to know that this is a historic fight. It's a spiritual event. It is not an event of the norm. And so you're going to see history in the making here. And when you see the championship transfer, it ain't going to be because it's bad. It's going to be because it's good for Golovkin. It gives him an opportunity to understand what it is to lose. You know what I mean? That makes him bigger. It makes him better. That gives him that type of intestinal fortitude that no one can deny. And I promise you, Golovkin, we will give you a return match. We, it's not going to be where you're going to have an opportunity where you're going to be knocked down and discarded. You, no, 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 no. No, fair play for the boxer, safety for the boxer. You have an opportunity to become bigger than ever. Show them what you can do in losing. You know, we know what you can do in winning. <laughs> we know what you can do in winning. Ain't no question about that. You triple G. Got more belts than anybody. You know what I mean? You triple G. You know, so now let us see how you can win with somebody that gets knocked down for the guy that's on the corner that just lost his job, feeling sorry for himself. The man who had a, a virus, a cold, he can't seem to get up and go get it. You know, however it'll be. Show us to be a champion of the losers. Then you become a whole goddamn fighter. You know what I mean? A whole fighter. The Armenian named Vanis is going to make history right here before your eyes. I want you all to stop, take a pause, and realize that this man hasn't had the opportunity to fight. God gives him the strength. God gives him the motivation. God gives him the desire to recognize and realize and appreciate you, the fans. That's who he's fighting for. He's fighting for the people, for his fathers out there in the audience. Oh, Papa, you're going to be all right. It's been a long, hard fight. It's been a struggle. it has been a lot of hardships, but it's going to be all right. Vanis is going to bring it home, but it's going to be done because this great fighter named Golovkin will demonstrate how great he is, demonstrating how you can come back after you've lost rather than not being able to always win in another time. You don't know what's going to happen if you ever stumble. So now the stumbling is going to happen on Saturday night, Cinco de Mayo, and he will be reborn again. That's what you call, you know, redemption, coming back, you know, conversion. And so I just want you to know that this is a destiny fight with the beautiful women here that's fighting. Everybody here then said the same thing. All these different spiritual indications demonstrates what it's going to be when we raise the hand of Vanus here as the new champion of the world. 
And I want you all to meet and greet this young man because he has the courage of a lion. You know what I mean? And he has the heart and the strength, you know, those that would be less than none. He didn't come here to be no, what you call it, a, 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 a fig Newton for, uh, 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 for there ain't no cookie there for, for, for Golovkin to eat now. You know, Golovkin wanted a fight. He's going to get a fight because I think this is his fight for his most natural growth in his whole entire career. This will be the fight to demonstrate that he can lose and still be the greatest champion in the world. <laughs> and so I want you to know, Tom, I thank you so very much. And I would be unappreciative if I didn't say that Tom Loughlin is not only a great promoter, he's destined for greatness, but he also is, he picked beautiful senoritas, you know what I mean, you know, <laughs> that inspires everybody, you know what I mean? Yes, you know what I mean? So they are just wonderful. They're muy guapa. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> fantastical, you know what I mean? And they inspire me. When I get tired, I say, I, I got to quit now. You've been talking a long time. The energy from them just invigorates me. You know what I mean? That youth, thanks for the memories. Oh, how it used to be. <laughs> so with that, you got a great fight here that's going to happen. You got a fight that uh, you got a president that no one gave a chance at all to win. The Republicans didn't want him. The Democrats didn't want him. You know what I mean? The, what they call it, the super PACs didn't want him. All the special interest groups didn't want him. The only one that wanted him was the will of the people and their prayers to God, and he answered their prize with him being in interposition. He became president. The only thing that will change this scenario is not a knockdown or a put down to this great fighter sitting on my right. It's just destiny to really make him grow because we don't know what he could do if he lose. And we need to know that because we need to know when everything is going one way, you never know what it is when you stumble and them go another way. We want to know we got a real whole champion. And I think that uh, Cinco de Mayo will prove just that. So when you, when you say Vannis, it's history, it's destiny. And Vannis, I want you to come up here and tell these people what you're going to do, why you're fighting, you're fighting for the cause of the people. And we have a great staff member with, uh, with uh, how do you say your name? Edmund. <laughs> Edmund. <laughs> Edmund is right there. Edmund is right there with Vanessa. He, he does everything but take the blows, but he feels the pain. You know what I mean? So Edmund and Vanessa is here, but I want Vanessa to give you his heartfelt joy and thankfulness for Peter Nelson uh, and, uh, and Tom Loeffler that, gave, that God gave the history and gave us the opportunity because this was a, some kind of nightmare. This fight, if everyone you've heard testify before I even got here, everyone has said how the difficulty in this fight is still going on single to mile. It's only because of the steadfast perseverance of those who were in, in control or in power to make it happen. So this is a destiny fight, a God-given fight, and the spirit of the Lord is at work. Vanis Matriasso, come on, Vanis, come on. And the new, and the new. Thank you, guys. I'd like to thank uh, HBO, Tom, you know, my promoter, Don King. Thank you, Team Golovkin, for the fight, for the opportunity. Just like Big Don said, this is my destiny fight. This is everything I've been working for. You know, my name, Nightmare, was not something that I chose, was given to me. And, you know, I feel like this fight is going to show the world why I'm called a nightmare. I mean, I'm so hungry for this fight. This is everything I dreamed of. I'm ready to do whatever I can and give everything I can to the fans, to the world. Cinco de Mayo is going to be beautiful, you know. Boxing is a beautiful sport, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of Latino fighters out there. For it to be on a special holiday, I know there's a lot of Latinos going to be watching. My Armenians are going to be there. Everybody, this is for the whole world. Me and Gennady are going to put a good fight. It's Mexican style. We're going to go to war. I'm willing to do everything I can in there, you know, to come out victorious. I'm well prepared mentally. I've never been this ready in my life. The hunger, I've never been this hungry in my life. I can't wait to fight Saturday. I wish it was tomorrow. Let's go, baby. I want to thank you guys for coming out. Once again, HBO, thank you so much for having me on again. You know, Don King, thank you so much, you know, for believing in me. And now, you know, we did all the talking. Now let's walk to walk. Let's go Saturday, baby. It's our time. Thank you. How long? How long? Not long. There we go. <laughs> I, 
I need to get some of that energy done in front of the chicas over here. I can't say I picked them myself, unfortunately. Uh, Tecate is uh, always uh, the most beautiful uh, chicas uh, here to support the event. So we're glad you recognize that, Don. And, and uh, I'm starting to feel some of the energy that you are having up here on the podium. Since they're getting a little bit closer now, then it's going to give me more energy. But uh, uh, just to follow up on a, on a few of the things uh, that Don pointed out uh, with the Korean flag, Don, I don't know if you knew, but uh, Triple G's grandfather was born in Korea. So it's very topical. Very topical, yeah. It's good timing. It's destiny for both uh, North and South to come together. And, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that is really something. That's something he said. I didn't, I didn't interrupt. I'm interrupting him. It is so important that we don't get into no confrontation with North Korea because he has the same personality that I have and that a guy named Trump has. That's true. So with that, uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, Max Golovkin, who's uh, Triple G's twin brother, younger twin brother by about 15 minutes. Uh, they just celebrated, celebrated their uh, 36th birthday here uh, a few weeks ago, April 8th. Uh, also, uh, Edmund, uh, who's going to be, uh, uh, you know, we were at his gym uh, with Triple G uh, to support Ronda Rousey, who's... Uh, uh, also uh, trained by Edmund, and uh, Edmund said that Ronda's going to come to support the event. She likes, uh, naturally, she supports Savannah's, and, and uh, Triple G has always been a supporter of Ronda. Uh, Chris Cyborg is going to be there to support uh, or to come see uh, Cecilia. So there's going to be a lot of uh, celebrities out here uh, at the event. Um, with that, I want to bring up uh, one of the uh, people who's known Don actually longer than I have, uh, someone who used to work with Don together on a lot of events. Uh, someone who's been in boxing longer than I have. Uh, someone who has some kind of a wild chemistry up there in Big Bear, California at his gym, the Summit, High Altitude Training Center. He's been voted Trainer of the Year recently. And uh, uh, Abel, if you have, I think you had something also uh, in, your, in your bag. But uh, with that, I want to bring up uh, the professor of pugilism. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try it, Don. Yeah. Professor of pugilism, the mad scientist up there in uh, Big Bear, California, Dr. Abel Sanchez. Yeah. I'll try to keep this short, Don. <laughs> I, I'm sorry we're going to disappoint you on Saturday, but... Uh, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you to everybody for coming. Uh, we are so happy that Tom was able to keep this, uh, this card together. We didn't know at the time, of course, it was going to be such a historical card with uh, these two young ladies on the, on the show uh, making history. Uh, we, are, we have been in the gym for 10 weeks. We're well prepared. I know that Edmund uh, has Vaughn is very well prepared. We just hope that uh, the fans uh, turn out to support uh, this great event. Uh, I hadn't heard a press conference with Mr. King at the helm or at the mic in a long, long time. I missed it. Uh, please come out and support us. Thank you. Abel, don't, uh, don't sit down yet. We have a surprise for Triple G. I'd like you to be the one to present it uh, to him because you're the one that's uh, done all the hard work. I do the easy work putting the fights together and uh, Abel does all the hard work up there in Big Bear, California. We see the WBA has a special belt for this event. The WBC has the Cinco de Mayo 
uh, belt for this uh, event, and uh, we just received this today. In fact, uh, Gennady doesn't know about it, so it'll be a little surprise. I want you to present this, Abel. Uh, it's the uh, ring from the IBF to signify uh, their champion having made uh, at least three title defenses. So, um, Abel, if you want to present this. Yeah, we are witnessing, I think, history here, and, uh, and this young man is going to be, uh, he's going to go down with, uh, in middleweight history with some of the great middleweight uh, fighters of, our, of the past. This is uh, the IBF telling him what a great fighter he is. Thank you. That's, uh, hmm? Edmund, do you want to say a few words? Or? Yeah. Okay, we're going to bring up uh, Edmund before we bring Triple G. We had uh, Triple G's coach. And now we're going to have uh, Edmund come up and say a few words on behalf of Avanis. Um, I want to thank uh, GGG Promotion for the opportunity. Abel Sanchez, you know, they've, we've, I've worked out in their gym before with Ronda and they've been um, great to us. So he gave a key to the gym to us so we could train, but now we're going up against each other. And I'll tell you, a happy fighter is a very dangerous fighter. So Vanus is very happy and he's gonna be dangerous on Saturday. So thank you for everything and we'll see you guys out there Saturday. Thanks for everything. Edmund has a lot of great champions that came out of his gym in uh, Glendale. In fact, uh, I recently wore, if you saw Edmund, uh, one of the Roots of Fight shirts that they made of the Glendale Fight Club. So, um, you, know, you know, Ronda Rousey and a lot of other uh, uh, great champions coming out of uh, Edmund's gym. So with that, uh, without any further ado, I don't think uh, uh, this uh, unified champion needs any introduction. This is a historic event, not only because of the Cecilia and Kaylee being the first on uh, HBO, uh, for female boxing, but also Triple G has the chance to tie a record that most people, many people thought would never be broken or tied. If he is successful on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, he'll have made 20 middleweight championship title defenses that will tie the great Bernard Hopkins record. And Bernard is somebody, he's a living legend, someone who uh, had fought so long in his career that nobody thought anyone would ever come close to 20 middleweight championship defenses. So with that, I want to bring up the WBC, WBA, IBF, IBO, middleweight champion of the world, Gennady Triple G Golovkin. Thanks, Tom. Good to see you, everybody. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming today who support boxing. First of all, I want to say, say it, thanks people who support boxing. This is HBO, this is sponsors, partners, this is Tikata, Chivas, Jordans, like so many great people, you know. Everybody knows, I re I'm a very real guy, just I understand my situation, just this is not easy fight, this huge fight for us. I believe this biggest chance to Vanas teams, you know, I know his team is very respect his team. It's huge guys, you know, huge team and huge promoter. Thanks promotions, nice promotions for this day. This is biggest day for boxing, Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. You know, right now we have big fight in home. Thank you people who support all of us. Just miss this fight. We're I promise we we'll bring amazing show, amazing event. Please enjoy. Welcome to Stop Hub Center. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gennady. You'll see from these two warriors, actually these four four warriors up here on the dais, you'll see the true Mexican style in the ring on Cinco de Mayo. As Gennady alluded to, I wanted to also acknowledge some other sponsors, Jordan Brand, who's a personal sponsor of Triple G, Hugh Blow, who just came out with a new uh, Triple G model watch, um, Bijan, who uh, graciously provided uh, all his formal wear, and also from Kazakhstan, TTC, as well as uh, Tesna Bank, uh, two other sponsors for this event. So with that, we're going to have the fighters uh, come down. I think uh, Fred, 
uh, where Torsten will help pose the fighters here in front of the belts. Um, we'll do a combination of uh, the female champions, the female fighters, and then also all four uh, fighters uh, together.